Hey TV fans, Bored now back with you on this video I return to From. So this is From Season 1, Episode 5. The episode is called Cigarettes. Full spoilers from the start of this review. So this one I like quite a bit and I much prefer it to the last episode. There's some good tension here with the Sarah plot as she tries to act out what she's been told to do so she's being manipulated again by these things who are telling her then all she has to do is kill Ethan the young boy and if she does that everyone gets to go home everyone will be free so we get a nice little build up from that happening or then it could happen throughout the episode we see her early on after she's had the collapse and the fit where she's being looked after by Kirsty, so we get a bit more of the Kirsty character in this episode or Christy sorry it's her first night back as well after treating me from the first episode and that's something which Boyd points out to Sarah's brother Nathan who's really anxious to to see her because he's worried about what she will do and there's a nice scene during the night between Kirsty and Sarah as they start to bond and they talk about like she mentions you and Kenny are a nice couple and Christy dismisses this a bit saying well not really we're just friends she says it's complicated because she's got someone back home who she was like engaged to be married to and she hasn't seen her since the whole event so that sort of leads them on to a hypothetical from Sarah where she's saying to Christy hypothetically if it meant you could go home like if everyone could go home and see their loved ones would you kind of take one life or she puts it in those terms like is one life worth the rest of us getting to go home and and once again you can see what the episode's doing because it's almost giving her like this this sign this motivation this show is so much about like kind of themes of religion and or like certain destinies and people being given signs to then act on them so that this is what this scene is about where christie's like sure that's that's a lot of good for just a little bad she she says or something so that's part of like giving in her mind christy uh, sorry sarah a sign to go ahead and do what she's planning to do with ethan so the next morning she goes over and is very friendly once again with the family and they're concerned about her because of what happened in the diner and she has this idea to take Ethan to the farm which her brother like helps runs and show him to the farm shows him the animals so Tabitha decides she wants to go with them, which she does. At the same time, Jimmy has started writing all these questions on the wall. That's his big thing in the episode, where he's starting to question everything about what exactly is going on. So he's doing that, which I think seems a bit fast for him to be doing this, but I guess it works well enough. So Tabitha goes with them to the farm and this scene slowly builds like the tension of it where her and her and Sarah go off to a barn like to another part and they leave Ethan alone for a minute and it's a trick Sarah tricks her and, and locks her in and that's when she plans to to kill the boy and she goes to him and says you're a brave boy this is for the greater good all this sort of talk and at the same time the brother Nathan warns the priest the preacher about what he thinks Sarah's gonna do so they rush over and they they get there just in time and the brother like steps in helps Ethan escape really Ethan gives Sarah a kick because at this point he's starting to get scared as he naturally would 
and it's it's heightened like in the crosshair Sarah stabs her brother in the throat like by accident we see a quite a bit of blood and it all escalates so the brother Nathan dies and Sarah flees to the woods now the only thing I don't really like about this is we haven't really been given much reason to care that much about the brother so it just feels like it's a a, a big thing because it would be to Sarah and also it's just another body just to up the consequences of, of what's just happened. It feels like they're not maybe going to kill the boy so let's take this other character who probably isn't such a big character. But that's my one complaint about that scene is that we don't really know we know very little about Nathan, so we don't really care that much about his death, apart from it impacting on Sarah. But that's the way it all plays out, and and what Jimmy comes up to Boyd later on and says, well, what are you going to do about Sarah? And, and, and Boyd simply says, if he comes back, or, or if she comes back from the woods, we'll deal with it there. And he's quite vague, but I think we know what he means. And Jimmy's like, well, if she doesn't, what then? And and he says, well, that's it's been dealt with. Because the implication is that Sarah wouldn't survive the night in the woods. So that's kind of the answer. And Jimmy's not really satisfied with that. That's why by the end of the episode, him and Tabitha are, are continuing to ask more questions. And the latest question they write on the wall before the end of the episode is did we survive the crash so that's going to be something they dig a bit more into we get some more stuff with julie and fatima and they go to the lake and they bond a little more because fat fatima tells julie quite a dark story about her past about her super religious family so this show is definitely digging into like the bad and the good sides of religion and faith but that's the thing where it's a really dark story from this character who up to now we've only seen mostly positivity from but she she tells a pretty graphic story about her upbringing and when she lost her father i think it was so so that's the whole thing with them and then we get a bit more with julie and the family later because it's it's her that Ethan runs to after the fallout where Sarah's tried to kill him and she's really upset and we we get some nice scenes with, with them as siblings once again where Julie is very good with her brother and she's doing that thing of like cheering him up sort of thing so, so that's pretty, pretty solid stuff. Speaking of Boyd this episode we get more on him and his loved one which he lost which I'm assuming is his wife and there's this whole scene where he visits her graveyard and he starts talking about how he's got a big plan and he's using like a baseball metaphor and he's telling her that he just needs her to give him a sign so once again we're back to the religion stuff and later on in the episode like randomly when he's in the diner with Kirsty or, or Christy sorry I keep doing that but he, he's trying to cheer Christy up like because she feels really bad because Sarah took the scalpel when she stayed overnight when she was at like the the practice so she feels bad because she befriended Sarah and feels she was quite naive and and Boyd makes it clear this isn't really on you and you've saved a lot of lives so it's not your fault but it's when they're having that conversation that the jukebox randomly comes on as it does and his his song starts playing I guess the song which is personal to him and his wife and that's the sign. He feels that's the sign. Then, then she's giving him the go-ahead for this big project. We find out a little bit more about Jade in the episode as well, as he continues to be paranoid, even though he now realises that there's probably something to what everyone is telling him. But he's eager to find out the truth about what's going on in the town and 
to to go back home. So that's the whole thing with him that gives him motivation. We see him early in the episode, Nick, or steal a car radio, and so he's he's getting ideas about a, a plan to to get them all home. So this again feels very lost, but we learn more about him than he's a big tech guy and. He's recently made a big score on, on like something he invented. So this does give him a bit of an ego, like a bit of, of a complex about himself, where he feels he's better than, than everyone else in the town. So at one point he stumbles into the bar, and, and this is a good scene actually, because like he's he's ranting and raving to the bartender and there's an amusing moment where he drinks some local ale and, and like he, he kind of spits it out. It's like, oh, this is disgusting. And that's when he starts talking to him. Or bitter because he's meant to be like doing this big score because he celebrating his big like money-making thing. Paradox theory. And, and then he's surprised that the bartender knows this stuff because he studied study f- philosophy so so that's the whole thing so they slowly start they bond a little when the bartenders puts it quite simply if you're really as smart as you're saying you've got that radio why don't you try and put it to good use trudy starts flirting with jade as well at one point when he's out and about and that's a pretty funny thing but that's just going to be her thing i think maybe flirting with people or just being a bit like kooky and sort of off the rails i don't think there's going to be that much more from once again let me know your thoughts in the comments below like and subscribe as always share me out on social media also for extra perks you can support me at patreon.com slash board now patrons get early access to these from reviews thanks for listening more soon